I, I'll tell you why. Because uh, we're going to meet um, a lady whose, whose fondness for the, her fur and feathered friends led her to tread the path of vegetarianism for the past 20 years. She's pretty far-famed in her own right as a pop star and as a photographer. She's married to a man. And she's just written a new book called Home Cooking on the culinary delights of the nut, the pulse, the bean, and the generally green. Linda McCartney. Yeah, she, uh, Helen said that she wouldn't fancy tearing the head off a chicken. And I think that's what put you off eating meat, wasn't it? Yes, I'm an animal lover, and I don't think we should eat them. So I decided I'd do a vegetarian cookbook yeah. that wasn't cranky. Everybody thinks of vegetarians as cranks. I do, yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> well I'll show you if you get the cookbook, and Helen cooks for you, you'll see we're not. Yeah, yeah. I didn't get the free copy, but never mind. Well. Uh, did you, you, you ate meat as a child. Yeah. I mean, do you still have nightmares about roast beef? Or? No, I liked meat. I never associated it with an animal. I never realized that the animals I love, people were going, <coughs> and then we'd eat them. You see, it's just like you and the chicken, Joe. You're listening to this now. Do you, I mean, wasn't it the story about the lambs when you, that yeah. it came to you? We were looking at our baby lambs gambling yeah. in Scotland, this was, yeah. Yeah. and we were eating leg of lamb, and we realized that those legs that are jumping in that field are on our plate. So we thought we can't do that. It's like the, they're doing deer now in Scotland, aren't they? That's right, Little yes. bambines going up mm. the, mm. the slaughter, you know. I'd... Delicious. Well, <laughs> not for them. <laughs> oh, no, they don't enjoy it. No. I mean, do, do you ever consider preparing meat for your guests? Never. No, I, I mean, people who come to our house say, after they've had the food, they say, you sure that isn't, there wasn't meat in there? I said, no, it's... it's... What do you use then as a kind of... Um, meat substitute. Well, there's something called textured vegetable protein, which is all Involving. protein. No, it tastes like meat, it chews like meat, but there's no gristle, Terry. So just think. And it has no uh, fat, and it's very healthy. So yeah. we use that. We have barbecues. I mean, we had the comedian Steve Martin's a friend of a friend of ours, and he came around. We were doing a barbecue, and Paul had all these sausages and burgers, and he opened it up and went, Oh, I'm a vegetarian, I can't eat that. And we said, no, there's no meat there. It just tastes great. And he went, oh, give me that. And he was shoving him in his mouth. Wonderful. But what, why try and make it look like meat if it isn't? Well, I'm trying to get the meat eater not to eat meat. As simple as that. Yeah. So if you want to say to him, well, look, you know, have something. If he says, well, I want my steak. Yeah. Yeah, but you think, well, think of the poor animal that has to die for that steak. Whereas I can fry up something that tastes just as good, if not better and you won't miss it. You'll have a hearty meal. And that's what this cookbook, it has about 200 recipes that aren't pulses and beans and cranky. It's, it's proper food. Yes, but does a lack of meat give you the right diet? I mean, does, well, I mean, is, meat is, is it healthy? Not, it's not good for you, is it? Think about it, an animal's going to be killed. It's gonna put out adrenaline, that's fear. And, and it's like a slab of fear that you're eating. And I mean, people, it gives you heart trouble. It, it's not good. And we've only taken one thing out of our diet and that's meat. We eat everything else. Yeah. There are plenty of things. So if people get the cookbook, they'll see what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, you also have a bit in it, which I, I think is, intrigues me, where you're involving the family in the cooking. Mm. Having had a family myself, I do tend to scoff at that a little bit. We'll get you in the kitchen, you know. Do you know where it is? Yes, my wife. <laughs> it's the room my wife is in. You, right. Yeah. Well, yeah. we'll get, I'll give her the cookbook. Yeah. Um, yeah, it show, it's not just... I'd like to know how you get the children involved without actually chaining them to the sink. Oh, no, they like it. It's fun. It's easy. You just um, give them little things to start with and involve them. And they like being with parents anyway, kids. So mm. you have to get the cookbook, teach your kids. Yeah. yeah. I mean, do you help your mother, Helen, in yeah. the kitchen? Tell the truth now. I want the truth here. Yeah, I do. Do you? I Can you cook? Omelettes. What, omelettes? Yeah. Good. And what, do, you, do you like meat? George, you're a meat and two veg man, aren't you? Very much so, yes. I mean, uh, would you, you probably <coughs> wouldn't agree then with, with Linda about the slabs of scared stuff that we're no, eating. I think we've the perfect answer to Linda's problem, and that's wild venison in the north of Scotland. The deer have to be culled, 
Held, you mean, not cold. Cold. They have to be, otherwise they would starve to death. Yeah, well, why don't you give them hay? Well, I mean, I'll give them hay. Yeah, but they would just keep breeding. The, the time would come when there has, they have to be well, cold. Well, I, I don't agree with that. You see, I think people play God too much. I think a lot of vets save cows and sheep that are just going to be murdered, and then the farmer gets money. I mean, it's not out of love, is it, really? You know, it's all economics. Exactly, yeah. but it's, it's living things, you know, with mm. hearts and feelings. Mm. And I think even, even everybody's into the green thing. Well, you know why they're chopping down the rainforest and the British forest. It's to fatten animals to feed people. When people don't need them, in fact, there'd be no starvation if we didn't fatten animals on grain. If we gave the grain to the other countries, there'd be no, no suffering. Can't so. argue with that, George, can you? Well, it's too fundamental, I think. Well, I think we have to practice it if we want to save this world. We can't just talk it and, you know, we have to actually do something kinder. I think clear our consciences of, of death, really. I mean, there are a lot of slaughter going on that people don't even realize, you know. But George, George supervises abattoirs, don't you? At least you make oh, sure yes, that they're do, properly yes. run. But I must go back to this venison because the deer have to be culled, otherwise they'll starve to death. I mean, if you feed them to breed more and the time comes, when they will starve to death. But these deer are being bred. No, from we have wild deer in the Highlands. I mean, uh, I know, I've, we, biggest, we yeah. know well, the Highlands know that, well, yes. and I'll tell you. And they you, have to be shot. Well, our deer haven't been shot, and we have tons of, of crops that they don't eat, mm. and they multiply just so many. I don't think we have to play God anymore. Well, I think somebody else will be shooting your deer. No, I mean, our deer don't need shooting. They're very mm. happy. I mean, it's, it's violence, and you know, I think. People are fed up with it. And I think, well, that's why I've done this cookbook, really, for the people who You're want You're messianic to. about this, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, very. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of people say, oh, I'd love to be vegetarian, but I don't know how to. So that's why I've done the cookbook. Yeah. Well, I shall get the cookbook. Good. And I'll force my children, under pain of death, to help me in the kitchen. I think your children would be, they'd be happy. I think putting your hand inside a chicken that's been you get at the, at the shops, you know, and you pull the heart out and the We're back to all everything. creatures great and small again now. <laughs> Don't stop that. Every time I turn it on, it puts me off my dinner. But, Linda, right. good luck with the cookbook. Thank and as you. I said, I, I'll show it to my children and see what they say. Good. Helen, it was lovely to talk to you. And good luck with the movie. It'd be wonderful, the premiere. George, you too. Thank you all for coming. My guest tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you'll join me on Wednesday when my guests will include David Steele. And we'll see you on Wednesday at 7. Bye-bye.